Welcome. Today we worship our Lord on this sixth Sunday of Easter. And in today's sermon, I am preaching on all the opportunities that we have to share our faith in Jesus. I'm so glad that you've joined us. I do have one correction from my prayers from last Sunday. In last Sunday's service, we prayed for a healthy pregnancy for Melita Hoffman's daughter, Beth. But that was incorrect. It is Melita Hoffman's daughter-in-law, Chelsea. Now, the Lord knew exactly who we were praying for. It was just that I didn't. It is now my pleasure to introduce one of our elders, Rick Holderreath, for an update and a prayer. Good day. Uh, I'm here to give an update on the call process uh, from our call committee. As uh, Nathan reported last week, the paperwork has been sent to Austin. Uh, this paperwork includes uh, a demographic survey of the population around our location here on the Beltway, a congregational survey that shows what the makeup of the congregation as do member numbers and the makeup of the members, the result of the pastoral survey submitted by 84 members of the congregation and the names of the pastoral candidates submitted by the congregation. The district will review our needs and then send us a list of candidates for the call committee to review and interview. We are in week one of a process that probably will take about eight weeks before we hear back from district. We are now in the waiting period for our district to respond. We ask that you continue to pray for the call process, the members of the call committee, and the pastor that the Lord already knows will answer the call. So will you please join me in prayer? Most gracious Heavenly Father, even though we are not able to join together in worship, we give thanks that we are able to worship and hear your word through electronic means. We pray that you would be with the call committee and ask for your guidance throughout the call process. We pray for the pastor that will receive our call and the pastor you have already chosen for us. We give thanks for Pastor Saul Hill and the years he has shepherded our congregation here at Zion be with him and Julie as they prepare for retirement from this ministry and search for their next call. We ask this all in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Let us now begin our worship by joining our voices with our opening hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, you protect your children from all that would harm our salvation. Give us the courage of faith and love toward you, that we have boldness to live for you and confess your holy name above all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now listen carefully to readings from God's holy word. The first reading for the sixth Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 17. While Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus in the resurrection. And they took hold of him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the middle of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in, in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. We ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring to us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but being made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, 
not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now join in singing our sermon song, Cornerstone.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My text is from 1 Peter 3, verse 15. But in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. This is my text. My dear friends in Christ, do you ever find it a little bit hard to talk about Jesus? A lot of people do. We just don't get around to witnessing for and about our Savior. We want to. We love Jesus. We are Christians. Yet for some reason we hesitate. We wait. We say very little. Since we are Christians, it is to us that St. Peter directs the word of God that will serve as our text. And before Peter speaks to us about witnessing, he begins with the words, but in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Another version has it like this, concentrate on being completely devoted to Christ in your hearts. My friends, nowhere do we find our God asking us to give only a part of ourselves to him. Nowhere do we find our God asking us to be lukewarm in our commitment. Nowhere do we find God asking us to just be weekend warriors for God. Instead, we find our great and wonderful God asking us for our all, asking for ourselves, asking us to be completely and totally devoted to Jesus in our hearts our minds, our souls. And these words from our text about witnessing for Jesus, about speaking up for Jesus, they come from a rather strange place. We find ourselves a whole lot like St. Peter on the eve of our Lord's crucifixion. We can almost see the scene, it's so familiar. Jesus has just announced to all of his disciples that they will lose their faith in him. Not I, said Simon Peter. If they imprison you, I'll stand by you. In fact, I'll even die with you. Peter had a very strong feeling of loyalty and love and devotion to Jesus. We know that he loved Jesus dearly. He wanted to confess his trust in Jesus. He wanted to bear witness to Jesus. He wanted to display to the world his love for Jesus. But in this case, when he is asked to give an answer for the reason of the hope within him, he is terrified, so frightened, that he says he never knew Jesus, and to make it worse, he even swore to it. This same Peter, once so weak, but now forgiven and strengthened by God's Holy Spirit, calls for you and me to be witnessing and confessing Christians. Peter says that we first must concentrate on being completely devoted to Christ in our hearts. Neither family, nor friends, nor business, nor pleasure, nor making a living, nor enjoying that living, not even life itself, nothing dare mean more to us than Jesus. Our text continues, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you 
to give the reason for the hope that you have. You see, with Jesus in our hearts, he says, be ready to speak, ready to talk up for Jesus, ready to witness. A silent devotion or witness is not enough. If our hearts are full of Christ, then our mouths will speak of him. If Jesus is sanctified in our hearts, then we will be ready to give an answer to the hope within us. We will be ready to stand up and tell anyone what he means to us, what he has done for us, ready to speak of that hope that lives within us. And our Lord certainly provides us with all kinds of opportunities to witness. Just think of all the opportunities God gave to Peter. Opportunities before the thousands of restless people on that first Pentecost. Before the prejudiced court that had condemned Jesus to death. Before Cornelius, that Roman officer, and his household. Before small groups and very large groups. And God gives you and me opportunities to give an answer to those who ask us about the hope that we have. Opportunities in our homes, opportunities in our communities, where we work. Now we have opportunities online, on social media, with our friends, basically wherever there are people. And having provided the opportunity, God wants each one of us, no matter of our age, to be ready to speak anywhere and everywhere. One of the greatest evangelists of the past, Dwight L. Moody, was once heard to remark that the best epitaph that could ever be put on his tombstone would be a young man walking about the streets witnessing to Jesus. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. When our hope and our Christian faith show People will want to know the reason. And God says, tell them. This hope amounts to all that we expect from God in Christ Jesus. It is the gift of God in Jesus. In fact, it's a whole package of gifts from God, including the gift of forgiveness of all of our sins, the gift of the knowledge that we are now at peace with God. Not peace later, that peace we have right now. And we have the gift of the absolute certainty that we are on the way to heaven, to what St. Peter calls the inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade kept in heaven for you. This certainty, my friends, comes from knowing what Jesus did for you and me, not anything we have done. That is what we are to talk about, what Jesus has done, what Jesus means to us, the story of his love for us and for all people. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks, but do this with gentleness and respect. Conscious of our own individual sins against God, and yes, that includes all those times when we have been silent about Jesus. And believe me, my friends, I've missed many opportunities that God has given me. But knowing 
that Jesus has redeemed us from the power of sin when he died for us, and loving Christ for what he has done for us, we quietly go about telling others what he has done also for them. The great witness of Scripture, they are not pictured as ramming their message down the unwilling throats of people, but as quietly and reverently telling the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Is that really so hard for us to do? I mean, living here in America, God gives us so many opportunities to share his love. In some cases, people almost expect us as Christians to tell them about the hope we have. While in today's America, there may be repercussions for what we say at work and even within our communities, we still do not have the same kind of fear of punishment or martyrdom like the disciples of old. And we have reason to be ready to give an answer. It is the hope within us. It is Christ Jesus, our Savior, who lives in us. It is everything that we love, believe in, and hope for. Like Peter and John, we feel that we cannot but speak the things that we have seen and heard. We have this hope. We have this assurance. We have these promises from our God and Father in heaven. Many others don't. We know that Christ has died for them. We know that Jesus has done everything that is needed to forgive all of their sins. We know that he has opened the doors of heaven for them as well. We know that he loves them and that he wants everyone to be in heaven with him but they don't know it. So my friends, can we remain silent? Can we be quiet while our friends live and possibly die without Christ? Can we be silent when perhaps even members of our own congregation have strayed away from Jesus? Can we be still and quiet while members of our own dear families live their lives without Jesus and are in danger of spending their eternity away from him? Can we stand still and do nothing? Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who ask you to give them a reason for the hope that you have. Will you? For Jesus? When Dr. John Broadus, a great preacher of the 19th century, when he was converted as a little boy, he went up to one of his schoolmates, Sandy Jones, a red-haired young boy, and he was instrumental in bringing his friend to faith in Christ. At the close of the service in which his friend publicly confessed Jesus as Lord, Sandy came up to his friend and said, Thank you, John. Thank you. Dr. Broadus later left that little town and he became the president of a large seminary. Every summer when he would go back home, an awkward red-haired farmer in plain clothes with mud on his boots would come up to him and stick out his big bony hand and say, Howdy, John. Thank you, John. Thank you.
for telling me about Jesus. Many years later, his friends say that when Dr. Broadus lay dying at home and his family was all gathered around him, the doctor said this, the sweetest sound I expect to hear in heaven next to the welcoming voice of him whom having not seen I have tried to love and serve will be the welcome voice of Sandy Jones saying, Howdy, John, and thank you, John. When I enter that beautiful city and the saved all around me appear, I want to hear somebody tell me, it was you who invited me here. May each of you have this double blessing, to be eternally saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus and in heaven to see at least one person who heard the story of Jesus from you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds together in Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. Please now join me in confessing the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This is normally the time in our worship where we would be receiving our offerings. You are encouraged to continue uh, to faithfully uh, contribute to your church you have been doing so by going online to Pasadena, zionpasadena.org or you can simply mail your offerings into the church. Your continued generosity has been and continues to be greatly appreciated. Will you now pray with me? After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and please reply. reply Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the new life and salvation with which you have brought beauty into our lives and our world again through the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray that you would open the ears of all who would hear your word from us, that this salvation come to many in true repentance and faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit mightily, especially upon those who are called to preach, proclaim, and teach your life-giving word. Guide all pastors, teachers, 
and servants of the church to be faithful in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To all who bear the authority of government in our land, give your blessing that tranquility and peace rule our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Visit with your peace and healing all who are suffering illness, injury, or any painful difficulty. Especially we pray for any loved ones of our members or anyone watching who is ill in any way, including our former member, Bill Coates, who is still recovering. We also pray for Melita Hoffman's daughter-in-law, Chelsea, who is expecting a baby. Please bless her, Lord, with a normal and healthy pregnancy and in the months ahead, the birth of a healthy baby. We pray for all those who are anxious or upset with all the troubles in our world. Remind them, Lord, to let not your heart be troubled or weighed down with any fear, but to lift their eyes to your sure and certain promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We now conclude our service with our closing hymn, Almighty Father, Bless the Word. <laughs>